Hi everyone, on the previous video I mentioned that film cameras were getting more and more expensive, but so does film. Some sellers even ask ludicrous amount of money for one roll of Tri-X, but generally speaking it's around 10 to 15 bucks for one roll of film. That's a lot of money. What if I tell you there is a way to save money on two 35mm film? That's the topic of this video, so let's get on with it. What you'll need is this. This is bulk film. It's the same type of film as the one you'll find in commercial canisters, but it's in a roll. This is 100 feet or 30 meters of film, and it allows you to create around 17 36 exposure films, 35 millimeter. You also need some of these. These are reloadable, reusable film cartridges. Some of them are made out of metal with a cover that pops off, or like this one, plastic made with a top that twists open. I really enjoy these plastic ones, but metal ones are good too. You also need something like this. This is a bulk film loader. This one was being made by Western. You can find them secondhand or newer ones are still being sold today. This is a summer investment, but you'll break even pretty quickly, believe me. This one is 40 years old and it's still going strong. It's very durable if you take good care of it, so no need to worry about that. On the end of this video, you will find some tips and tricks on how to save money doing this, so stay tuned for more. But first, let's have a look at how this machine works. On the top of it you have this trap door that pops open like this and this is where you're gonna put your film canister and this crank is gonna allow you to roll the film. On the side of this you'll find the frame counter that will tell you how many frames you have loaded into your canister and the top cover gives you two positions to insert cassette or to load film. This is used for safety reasons because when you want to use when you want to open the trap door you don't want light coming in ruining your whole roll of film. Believe me, you don't want to ruin that amount of film in just one mistake. And last but not least, there is this uh, small lever that acts as a safety feature so you won't be able to open the trap door when the gate is open and uh, there's danger for your film. But right now this loader is empty so we're gonna have to load it. Load the loader. All these operations need to be done in total darkness but what I have here is a roll of film that has been exposed to light a few years ago and it's totally useless so I'm going to use it for demonstration purposes. All the operations that need to be done in total darkness are going to be shown in black and white, just like this. The first thing you want to do is open up the loader and gently load the film into this compartment. Then you'll have to guide the tip of the film through the opening gate just like that. Once you're done, just put it back together. Don't forget the trap door, and there we are. The bulk loader is loaded. If you don't feel comfortable doing this in total darkness, just practice without film, obviously, in broad daylight, so you'll gain muscle memory on how everything works. And it's not that difficult, believe me. Now it's time to load this using this. You'll need to attach the film onto the canister spindles and I prefer to use masking tape. It works wonders. Any tape will work except duct tape which is thicker but masking tape is perfect for that job. Just cut around the 10 centimeters or 4 inches of tape and do it like this. Turn the cover to the insert cassette position, open up the trap door and you can now stick the tip of the film with the, your masking tape. Put back the film canister don't forget to put the top on, close the compartment, turn the cover to load film position and you're ready to roll. Just like that. You can rely on the frame counter to figure out how many frames you've rolled into your canister or simply by counting the number of turns. On the description down below you'll find some information on how many turns equals how many frames loaded into your film. When you're done, don't forget to slide it back to insert cassette position, open up the trap door and cut the film. Voila! Your film is ready to be used. Some cameras require the film to have a leader, so just imagine a capital J shape and cut it with scissors. This leader looks almost as good as a commercial one. And there you have it. Your film is ready to use. I sometimes use a sharpie marker just to remind me of what type of film is inside the canister so I'm not confused when I found one in my camera bag. But now the million dollar question, how much money will you save by doing this? With Tri-X you will pay like 12 bucks for a commercial film while doing this will cost you around 8 bucks. That's a significant saving. For a format pan, which is even cheaper, 
A film costs you less than three bucks. This is a bargain, honestly. But some of you might be thinking, well, this is good for black and white. What about color film? I went online and did a quick search and found out this. So you can see that one roll of color film would cost me 10 bucks instead of 15. That's again, a significant saving. But what if you don't have a film loader like this? Well, no loader, no problem. In total darkness, just unwind some film. You see the spread of your arms is around 36 exposure, more or less. And just do it by hand, hand roll it. This is tedious, sometimes some mistakes happen, but that's totally doable. You don't necessarily need a bulk film loader, but it, it makes things easier. Modern commercial canisters are usually not reloadable, but you can also beat the system. If you leave, let's say half an inch of the previous films taken out of the canister and use some scotch tape to splice them together and reload the film. That way you'll even save money on empty canisters. Back in the old days, film canisters like this ACFA or this Ilford used to be reloadable. So when you get expired film to do some experimentations, check out if the canister is not reloadable. You may be able to reuse it for many, many times. The rule of thumb is you can reuse a canister from five to 10 times, depending on how you handle it. Not only this method will help you save a lot of money, but now you can create your own custom made films. Let's say you got this camera at a flea market and you want to test it out. No need to waste an entire roll of film. Just roll six to eight exposure and that's good for testing purposes. You're saving money and convenience. What's not to like about that? But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful. This is the way I do to save money onto film for my YouTube channel or even my commercial and professional photography. But that's all I've got for you today. As always, I thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. If you like my content, leave a like, a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. That's all I've got for you today and see you next time. Goodbye.